Let's look at our question here. The equation of the auxiliary circle of the hyperbola. x square by 64 minus y square by 36 equal to 1 is. So there are four circles given to us. Let's figure out which one of these is our correct answer. Let's begin. So we have the equation of the circle, equation of the hyperbola given to us. x square by 64 minus y square by 36 equal to 1. Now, we know that for any hyperbola of the form x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1, the equation of the auxiliary circle will be x square plus y square equal to a square. Basically, the center will be the same as that of the hyperbola, 0, 0 in this case. And the diameter will be equal to that length of the transverse axis of the hyperbola. So, we get the auxiliary circle equation as x square plus y square equal to a square. In our equation, what is a square? a square is 64. So directly we can find the equation of the auxiliary circle, can't we? We simply write it as x square plus y square equal to a square, which is 64. That's it. The problem is wrapped here. Now, let's mark our correct answer. So we see in our options, x square plus y square equal to 64 is option C. And hence, this will be our right answer. In this question, we are asked to find the equation of this given hyperbola in its standard form. So, this hyperbola, you can see an x term and a y term. So, from there itself, you should be able to deduce that the center is no longer the origin. It has moved somewhere else to some other point. Basically, the origin has been shifted. You can look at it like that. So, let's begin our problem. We have this given equation here. So first thing I'll do is I'll club the x terms together. 4x square minus 32x. But then from both these x terms, I'll take 4 common. So it'll become 4x square minus 8x and I'll leave some space. Then I'll take the y square, y terms common. So it becomes y square plus 4y. And again, I leave some space. Now, why did I leave some space? to complete the square. All right. So this, this space plus 24 equal to 0 is what we have as of now. Now, how do we complete the square here? Look at this. x square minus 8x. x square minus 2 into 4 into x. Okay. So you add 4 square there next. Okay. So 4 square is 16. Now, y square plus 4y plus 2 square. This completes the square. Now, are we done with this? No, we added 4 square into 4 and minus 2 square on the LHS from nowhere. All right, so we have to balance that in the RHS. So, what's 4 square into 4? That's 24. 4 square into 4 is 64, sorry. So, minus 2 square, which is minus 4. So, this becomes. 60, 64 minus 4 is 60. So I can rewrite this equation as 4 into x minus 4 the whole square minus y plus 2 the whole square equal to 60 minus 24 when I take 24 from the LHS across to the RHS. So this comes out to 36. 60 minus 24 is 36. Now, I'll divide this equation by 36 to bring in my standard form. So this becomes x minus 4 the whole square. So 4 divided by 36 is 1 by 9 minus y plus 2 the whole square divided by 1 equal to 1. y plus 2 the whole square divided by 36. I divided the whole equation by 36. That's why the RHS became 1 as well. All right. So this should be our final answer. So here you can see that the origin has shifted. So the general standard form of the hyperbolic equation will be x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1, where the center is the origin. Here the center has shifted to which point? Look at it and tell me. x minus 4 the whole square, y plus 2 the whole square. So the center becomes the point 4 comma minus 2, as you can see in this figure. All right. So 0 comma 0 was where our standard hyperbola would lie. But this particular hyperbola will have center at 4, minus 2. That is just an extra explanation for your knowledge.
But our answer, what we are looking for, was the standard form of this hyperbola. x minus 4 the whole square by 9 minus y plus 2 the whole square by 36 equal to 1. And this comes out to option C and hence C will be our right answer. Got that? Now take a look at this question. The parametric coordinates of the point 8, 3 root 3 on the hyperbola 9x square minus 16y square equal to 144. We are looking for the parametric coordinates on this given hyperbola. So here's the hyperbola. This is what it looks like. Let's first convert this to the standard form. To do that, I'll make the RHS 1. Basically, I'll divide by 144 throughout this equation. So the LHS becomes 9 by 144 into x square. So 9 by 144 is nothing but 1 by 16. Here, the second part of the LHS becomes 16 by 144 into y square. So it becomes 16 by 144 is 9 equal to 1. This is the equation. So the standard e form of the equation of the hyperbola will be x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1. All right. So we can see that the points here, a dash and uh, the vertices, a dash and a, okay, would be denoted by a comma 0 minus a comma 0. So that will become here, you can see that a square is 16 when you compare both. 16 is a square. So, the vertices a dash and a would be given by 4 plus or minus 4 comma 0. Similarly, the ends of the conjugate axis, okay, would be given by plus or minus 0 comma b. Sorry, 0 comma plus or minus b. So, that will be the points b and b dash. So, that will come up to so you can see 9 is equal to b square, b will be 3. So it will be 0 comma plus or minus 3 for the points a a dash and b b dash respectively. All right. So these are the four points we get. But why did we use this? Because we are looking for the parametric form of the a point on this given hyperbola. So if you have x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1 as a given hyperbola, the parametric form, basically a form which can represent any point on this hyperbola would be given by a sec theta comma b tan theta. As simple as that. So here in our case, a is 4 and b is 3. We'll bring that into play. It will become 4 sec theta comma b which will be b tan theta will become 3 tan theta and the point we already have it as 8 comma 3 root 3. So when you equate the x part you see that sec theta will be equal to 2. Let me write that again. So when we equate the x part you can see that sec theta is equal to 2, 4 sec theta equal to 8 which means sec theta equal to 2 and we also get that 3 tan theta equal to 3 root 3 or in other words tan theta equal to root 3. So from here directly you can say that you are looking at theta of 60 degrees or pi by 3 radian. Okay. So our options had were in degrees, Okay, had values in degrees. So we will be using 60 degrees here. So the correct answer, my final answer would be a sec theta which will come out to 4 into sec 60 comma 60 degree comma 3 into tan 60 degree. This will hence be my final answer. Now let's check with our options which one is correct. 4 sec 60 comma 3 tan 60 is option C and hence C will be our correct answer. Got that? If the length of lattice rectum of a hyperbola x square by k minus y square by 25 equal to minus 1 is 22 by 5 units, then we'll have to find its eccentricity. So we have the length of lattice rectum of this given hyperbola to be 22 by 5 units. Let's look at this hyperbola x square by a square. This is of the form x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to minus 1. So this means that the transverse axis is along the y-axis 
and the conjugate axis is along the x axis so you have a hyperbola which is vertical okay vertically aligned hyperbola is what we have so from here we have to find the eccentricity so what can i deduce from this much i can say that a square is equal to k i can say that b square is equal to 25 and the length of the lattice rectum is 22 by 5 units what is the length of the lattice rectum here the length of the lattice rectum here will be 2a square by b and that is coming out to 22 by 5 2a square by b is what i'm getting because the transverse axis is along the y axis we are looking at a vertical hyperbola so here what can i say 2 into a square is k divided by b b is 5 equal to 22 by 5 this will cancel out 2 and 22 will cancel out from here i'll obtain that k the value of k is 11 okay so i get the value of k as 11 now i need to find so what what was k k was a square okay so that's why this is useful we have b square as 25 a square as 11 now okay so now i am looking for the value of the eccentricity so for a vertical hyperbola of the form x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to minus 1, then the eccentricity will be 1 plus a square by b square because a square represents the conjugate axis. Okay, the semi-conjugate axis squared is a squared and b square here is the semi-transverse axis squared. Alright, so then this becomes root of 1 plus a square is 11, b square is 25. So then this becomes root of 25 plus 11 by 25. 25 plus 11 is 36. That goes in the numerator. And 25 remains in the denominator. And root of 36 is 6. And root of 25 is 5. So I get the value of my eccentricity as 6 by 5. Alright. Now let's move ahead. We can mark option C as a correct answer. Because the eccentricity, we found it to be 6 by 5. Got that? In this question, we are looking for the equation of this hyperbola where it's given that the foci are at 4, 6, 4, minus 4 and eccentricity is 2. Let's begin. So the eccentricity is 2 where the foci is 4, 6 and 4, minus 4. Notice that the x coordinates are the same for the foci. Foci will lie on the transverse axis. Remember that? So x coordinates are the same. Only the y coordinate changes. So basically it's along a vertical line. You should be able to figure that out. Which means the axis, the transverse axis will be vertical. Alright. So since the transverse axis is vertical, we are looking at a vertical hyperbola. And this will have the standard form to be x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to minus 1. Or in other words, I'll just keep the RHS as 1. So then it becomes y square by b square minus x square by a square equal to 1. It will be of this form, the equation of our hyperbola. But this form is the standard form of a vertical hyperbola with center at 0, 0. Is the center at 0, 0 here? No. The center will be the midpoint between the two foci. The midpoint of the two foci is the center that is given by 4 plus 4 by 2 which is 4 itself, and 6 minus 4 by 2, which is 2 by 2, which comes out to 1. That is why the center here is marked out as 4 comma 1. Alright, now we have the center. So our equation will be of the form y minus 1 the whole square by b square minus x minus 4 the whole square by a square equal to 1. This is the expected form of the hyperbola we have. Now we need to find a square and b square. Let's proceed. For that we have the two foci given here. 4 comma 6, 4 comma minus 4. What is the distance between the two foci for a vertical hyperbola? The distance between the two foci is 2 into b into e. For a horizontal hyperbola it was 2ae. Similarly for a vertical hyperbola it will be 2be. So this comes out to the distance between 4 comma 6 and 4 comma minus 4 which comes out to 10. We already have the value of e don't we? It's given in the question e is equal to 2. So from here I can find the value of b as 5 by 2 here. It becomes 10 by 4 
which is 5 by 2. Now, b is 5 by 2. So, but we need b square. Alright, so here I can just write that b square is 25 by 4. Now, I need to find the value of a square. The square of the semi-conjugate axis. Alright, square of the length of the semi-conjugate axis. a square I can find that using the relation for the vertical hyperbola a square equal to b square into e square minus 1. b square is 25 by 4, bring that in. e square becomes 2 square which is 4 minus 1 becomes 25 into 3 by 4. This can be written as 75 by 4. So b square is 25 by 4 and a square is 75 by 4. Let's bring that in to our final equation here. Alright. So, the equation with hyperbola, uh, equation of the hyperbola with center 4, 1, as we said, would be y minus 1 the whole square by b square minus x minus 4 the whole square by a square. And we have that b square is 25 by 4 and a square is 75 by 4. So, then my answer here, my final answer is what I'm looking at now y minus 1 the whole square divided by b square which is 25 by 4 minus x minus 4 the whole square divided by a square which is 75 by 4 and this comes out to 1. This will be my final answer. Let's check with our options and we can see that we should mark b as our correct answer. Got that?